Open Kanban spirit is fun. And we really, uh, we really want you to feel at home. We really want you to feel like, like the cat over there. Hey, you know, don't worry about it. This, this stuff is easy. And, um, and it's useful and it's fun. And, and it's, it's actually, we want you to, to enjoy what is coming up now. So discover open Kanban. Again with the penguins, uh, I guess Antarctica must be good when it's not so cold. And uh, Canada is a place where we appreciate the cold. And one thing that I can tell you about this is that it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And the reason we have the penguins so much is because of our connection with open source. So what is Kanban today? And as you all know, we also have a, a course uh, a seven-hour course online and a two-day course in person where we teach Open Kanban and Kanbanese. So obviously we're trying to summarize the key parts. If you heard about Kanban and we thank you for being here, it means you are probably familiar with some of the meanings on this slide. Kanban can be sometimes a Japanese word. If you were to visit uh, Japan now or read some, some books about its history, You'll know that in Japanese, the word Kanban, the one on the top right there, uh, usually means a sign or a billboard, and it's used a lot like a logo for a business. In the old days, they would have these signs outside a shop, let's say a, a shop that sold fish or, or rice or, or what have you, and it will identify the, the Japanese people. This is the business for, I don't know, so Mr. Mishashiro, or Mr. Mishashiro Salmon or Tuna. And if Mr. Mishashiro is very good, uh, you will recognize it, right? And so people would wear even uh, the logo uh, on a t-shirt. And this became an easy way to recognize it. Of course, this is not the Kanban we're talking about. It's also a technique. Uh, Kanban was used a lot uh, in the Toyota production system, uh, whose uh, main influencer is, is Taichi Ono, to achieve just-in-time and reduce waste and value for the manufacturing of cars. But we're not talking about that one either. Even though there is some influence and some key ideas from it, this is not the case. Then, what is Open Kanban then? Uh, open Kanban is what most people think when they are talking about Kanban, but they haven't taken maybe an official course or uh, traditional education. They are talking about an agile and lean method that can be used in software, that can be used in development, in IT, in their own business. And uh, guess what? The basic ideas of Open Kanban have been around for a few, a few years now. And uh, this is basically what we are teaching now. It's not the Kanban you spelled in, in, in kanji over there, but in hiragana. And uh, the Japanese call it Kanban. And many people in the uh, lean development uh, field. Al Shalloway uh, calls this Kanban for Teams. Uh, Corey Ladas, uh, creator of, of Scrumban, obviously calls it Scrumban. And um, we at Agile Lion Institute call it Kanbanese when we make it even larger. We, we enlarge Open Kanban. There's another organization, uh, also important, that calls it, um, we call it the LKU Kanban. They call it the Kanban method. And we have no problem with them. It's just that basically they are, they deny that uh, Kanban is agile and they focus very much lately on making it a management method. We think that's fine. We think it could be used as a management method. But we truly focus on it as an IT focus method that can be used occasionally for business, but it's really well suited for IT. That's where it came from. And uh, we also put in Open Kanban some very unique characteristics. Now, let's talk about Kanban's origins. Uh, the gentleman on the left uh, is Taichi Ono uh, at a factory there at Toyota. He's the genius behind Kanban uh, in Japan, the this, this, this second meaning of Kanban we just discussed. And for him, it was a system where basically he could ensure that anything that got manufactured really had demand. So at Toyota, Kanbans were physical cards and also sometimes physical tokens that will represent demand. Demand coming from a part of the production process that was asking a part. So let's say, uh, if, and 
the key part was that demand was coming in a way directly from the customer. So if you're going to make 100 cars, uh, they say the first thing you demand is, okay, give me 400 tires, 100 uh, engines, and so forth. And Kanban cars were used to track and to make sure that only the things that were manufactured and the, the, and the machines that were used were truly demand. So he created what we call now a pool system, a Kanban system that is uh, directed and moved by demand. His, uh, his main book was translated properly to English in the 80s, in the Toyota production system. Uh, you'll have this presentation uh, later and you can see this, uh, find it in Amazon. And his ideas uh, were modified, extended, and uh, brought to a wider audience through a series of books. And today we, we actually recognize that uh, this whole movement became lean, no longer TPS, but lean. And there are a key influencers in this movement. Besides Teichi Ono, we have uh, Eli Golrat, who created the theory of constraints. Basically, he noticed that if, if everything is a system, and a business is a system, and a factory is a system, and if you didn't have any kind of bottleneck, any kind of constraint in the system, then you will be able to produce unlimited value. But guess what? You have limitations. You have a number of workers, machines. Some machines have their own uh, limits. So he said, as you manage the constraints in a system, as you deal with them, and you can think of a constraint, for example, you're going to heavy traffic and you're passing a bridge, and this bridge has a limited capacity, and suddenly there's traffic, right? So all all his views that related with, with queue, related with capacity and constraints, are an underlying strong influence on today's Kanban. Not only Ellie Goldratt's work, but also uh, Edward Deming. Edward Deming was a, a scientist, a statistician. His formal training was in mathematics and physics, but he's one of the key influencers of Lean because he didn't stop at, at measuring and making a statistical control, but he also noticed the nature of systems. He also noticed how to truly improve. You don't just measure using statistics, you, you improve systems of human beings. And uh, human beings are complex individuals. So his last theory uh, in the years before he passed away was called the system of profound knowledge. And what he was saying here is that let's, uh, let's optimize for learning, let's optimize for humans, let's think of a system and even consider the psychology of people to optimize and make this system better. And by the way, optimizing doesn't mean making everything at top efficiency because people cannot operate at top efficiency. We need uh, slack, we need reasonable rest, we need time to recover, we need to enjoy life. And uh, these uh, teachings are also part of Kanban. And lastly, of course, what we discussed in the beginning, uh, we have the whole Agile movement. The Agile movement has a lot of uh, great ideas, techniques that are useful and that we fully recognize as part of the heritage of Open Kanban and Kanbanese. So what is Open Kanban then? So Open Kanban is basically a method. It's a method that is fully Agile. Uh, it has a mindset like the Agile mindset. It, it shares the values and principles we discussed a few minutes ago. But the, the key thing is that in addition to this, like all the methods we're seeing there on the bottom of the pyramid, Open Kanban is also lean. And this lean heritage gives it a special advantage to deal with uh, issues like flow, with issues like uh, constraints and bottlenecks and capacity, and also has a, a view of looking at systems and has a view of optimizing the whole and thinking about uh, people in, in a respectful way so we ensure continuous value. Now, before we, we set up to, to create Open Kanban, we had a set of goals. And what is the problem with, uh, and let me go back to this slide. If you recognize a few of the methods there, you, you'd also know that 
perhaps you can buy the books, but they are certainly not free for any kind of education, any kind of uh, access to the knowledge. Most of it is, is either not free or expensive, and you cannot easily modify the method. If you are not one of the founders of one method, you cannot go and say, hey, let's change it, right? Because you can't. And you cannot even easily share the documents because they are copyrighted. And we say, you know, this is not right. And being a company that believes strongly in open source, uh, Agile Lion, for example, runs on Drupal, and Drupal is a major open source project, we thought there's something we can learn from open source. There's something uh, interesting and valuable from open source and the free software movement that should apply to knowledge. And when we were thinking about this, we say, okay, there's four freedoms that the open source movement, and especially the free software movement, talks about. And they're ideal for knowledge. So the first one is we want uh, Open Kanban, and this is one of our goals, uh, to be available to use for anything. We believe it's ideal for IT and software development, but if you want to use it for your own uh, personal life, if you want to use it for your business, for your nonprofit, great. You should be uh, allowed to do it anytime. Second, we want you to be able to, to study this thing, to question it, to, to tell us how much you would like to modify the wording here or there, or add a paragraph, you know. Eventually, we want to have also an open Kanban guide that you can download and see and have it in super, uh, and, uh, many, many languages and contribute to it freely. The third thing is we want people to be able to even change it. This is, in, in the open source world, it's called forking. We want, we want you to be able to, to change it and improve it, which is the fourth one. And for this reason, we, we, we hosted uh, Open Kanban on GitHub. And if you are not familiar with, with Git, uh, Git is this uh, very popular repository of a lot of uh, open source projects. Uh, probably the most well known right now will be Linux or Linux, depending on how you pronounce it. And uh, they are a major place, and the main document of Open Kanban is there. So, so if you were to navigate uh, to GitHub, let us go there for a minute, you would see that let us uh, show you. It's, the whole project is not just uh, on our website, but the main document is available there in English, and we welcome uh, contributors from any part of the world. So we have uh, two contributors, one right now, plus myself, and this makes it easy to make translations, changes, and you can even see uh, the flow and how things have been created over time, who's committed what, and stuff like that. So almost like if it was code. And the reason we're doing this is because we want this method to be vibrant and alive. We don't want it to, to, uh, to stagnate. We want it to have contributions from around the world.